Um, but I want to actually touch on that Moji thing. I only got to the point where um, he was arguing about not being compensated for his his work on Drake's stuff. Like, I just wanted to ask you, do you think Moji handled that the right way? Like, did he handle it the right way? Well, yes how, do you, no. how, how, how do you handle yes it? Yes and no. He it was he like, went on li- like he started blasting <laughs> everybody saying like you know oh you you paid me five grand for five for bills. this or five hundred dollars for this and I'm still in the hood and all he started you know, dissing Oliver and other you never other you never do things online it never goes well it's yeah. like Oliver's a two headed snake but at the snake. same time what do you expect from somebody that doesn't have artist development artist training that's another problem too if you're gonna take a random nigga from the hood and bring him into your sweatshop of writing or whatever the hell mm-hmm. you have to expect this is going to happen it's the same thing what they brought up the next my youth that allegedly whatever happened to him quentin like you're just gonna get random people bring them into something now, quentin's They're... different quentin didn't out it it oh, was uh, it was detail. me it was meek that was outed. detail that anyways regardless i'm just saying like when you take somebody out from the hood and you put them in a situation where you're not even telling them what's really going on. They're going to think like, hey, I'm going to get, you know, maybe he, I'm going to get a fucking feature on the album with my name on it or I'm going to get something. So to get $500, your man that's on the block, he, he said he dropped out of school from what? Grade eight, grade four. Grade four. He said grade four. So yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? $500 to him is just like, what the fuck? <laughs> like that's, that's baby food. So yeah. I think, I think he just, he didn't handle it the right way. Okay. But at the same okay. time, I understand why he did what he did. Because, mm. yeah, oh. yeah, he was on an expose, bro. <laughs> like, this guy's he like, I'm the, exposing you bitch-ass niggas. He did the Boogs fucking thing. I forgot about he that, the fam. Beat, yeah. The 24-hour live was. I forgot yeah. about all that, bro. Yeah, Ski. yeah, he did. I, yeah, I, yeah, I think, yeah, he handled that badly, bro. Like, I think I think if it was handled a different way, it would have been a different outcome still. You never know. You never I'm know. Just, I think so. I was just listening even, to the Drake okay. album and you know, I heard that because you know, he even, said my Molly's pop niggas. I'm like, what's Molly? <laughs> that, that shit was cold, <laughs> though. <laughs> yeah, but I don't, you know, yo, when you're going to those rooms, you don't know what the situation is going to be. You could tell them to me. I don't, I, listen, I'm not in a writer's room with these niggas. I'm mm-hmm. not. But. All these rooms operate a certain way. And if you don't operate within the confines of that room, you you might not get paid or you might, you know what I mean? Okay, but the whole expose business is what I'm trying to say, like, was like, bro, you didn't have to expose them like that. Like, maybe there's you, so maybe, many ways. Maybe he could have sold this story to somebody. Like TMZ or something. Get a look of change. If you're complaining about a look of $500, go big. But again, you know going back to my thing, there's no artist development. So why why would somebody like that yeah, think know, like that? He wouldn't know that. Man. If he's going to go out and expose it on a live in 2018, whenever the hell that shit happened, what mm. makes you think he would like he... It's not... And it's the Toronto guy. We know that that's, live is kind of the thing to go. Yeah, I'm saying like, <laughs> it's Toronto. Like, these <laughs> niggas are not going to go sell anything to anybody. They're going to go on live and expose it there. And yeah, I just don't think... Going back to it, he's not... Moji was... Uh, OG was a character within himself, but he wasn't like a full out artist like that. You know what I'm saying? And going back to the development, if there, if if the tables were turned, let's just say it was Mustafa the Poet, I think he would have handled it a little bit different because I believe that there is some sort of artist development there. But Whereas Mustafa, I think Mustafa understands the back end part more than a lot of people do. Yeah, yeah. It's not it's not artist development, but he understands the business. But that, but I think that's a part of artist development. Is you have to understand the business. You have to understand. Okay, well, yo. The, la- the label that you're with, it might give you a shitty deal. You're not just going to come out and expose them and beef a with lot, them. A lot of these guys don't even know what a deal is. They hear about these things, about deals, but there's writing deals, there's publishing deals, there's so much other... I tell thing. this guy this every day. Yeah. I tell this guy this every day that a lot of people, they just come in like, yo, I just want to make music and get paid. And they'll write on anything and they don't care yeah. what it's from, who like, it's from. They just want to come out and make music. But then when it's time to actually eat some money or yeah. their song goes big and they don't see no bread... Then it becomes, hey, well, my song has like 10 million diss streams, but I ain't getting paid. And well, you signed this, bro. I'll, 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 I'd say like, if someone wants to, and I'm going I'm to give you guys some game. If you want to do something in this music business right now, like definitely, definitely, definitely find someone that understands the back end of this business properly on a manager level. Like if you're going to be an artist, just 
figure the back end out because I just came back from New York at a business manager's meeting and it was different. And I realized that a lot of these niggas in, in, in Toronto doesn't have any representation. So, and that's sad, much less black representation. So nobody wants to be a manager. They all want to rap. No, there's people that want to be a manager. No, people that want to be a manager, but the music guys are not yeah. putting themselves in proper positions to be managed. Yo, bro, <laughs> bro. That, that's the problem. What, what happens is a man wants to, or a woman wants to be a manager for someone and they realize they turn into a full-time babysitter because mm -hmm. a lot of niggas don't want to get out of bed. They want to go to studio sessions when they feel like. There's, there's been situations that people have tried to fucking set up people with interviews and they reach five hours late. Like, you can't do that shit. You can't, you can't be doing things where people give you opportunities and you're not showing up for them. Timestamp right here. You feel my girl. Flop two days in a row. Amazing for your music career. But, but that's, and I know, and I, and I, and that's I know, not a time stamp. Yeah, but, I'll tell it straight up. No, but I know, yeah, yeah. I know, oh, especially you, you always talk about it. You're like, why don't people give these rappers opportunities? And that's the fucking reason why. A lot of these yeah. guys do not want to learn the business side and they don't want to act like business people. Being an artist, you are your own brand, you are your own property. And that's facts. And in order for you to fucking push, you need to operate like a business. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, nice. you may, you, you, it's good if you want to be an artist, be an artist. But if you know that you cannot handle the business side, get someone to represent you in the right way and show up. And that's it. But it, again, going back to your point, it also helps when, like, you're on time, you do certain things, you come. We see that, okay, yo, this person's professional, da 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 da. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, let, let's just give him the extra push. If we see him doing something, that's how the business works. Yeah. yeah. This business is, is relationships. Relationships. That's who you know, bro. And, and of course, at first, everybody's going to say, yo, you have to pay me for this because we don't know you, motherfucker. We don't know you. <laughs> and we've been around the block where, oh, yo, can you do me a thing? No, we can't do your thing because we've been doing bare people things and yeah. they're not doing nothing. Uh, so when you show up, when you pay, or if we ask you for an interview, you show up on time and you do what you got to do, we put a battery in our back and be like, yo, this person was dope. Yo, let's, let's do something to help them out. Let's give them some free game. Let's give them some free promotion. But if you think you're going to come here and take our time for granted, nigga, you're going to be at home on TikTok or Instagram going on your fucking live with two people because <laughs> no one gives a fuck about you because you don't show up and you don't respect people's time. Respect people's time, put in the work, and you'll get everything you want. It's that simple. That's a fact.